In this video, we're going to cover key things that you need to know about male sterilization, known as a vasectomy, which is a surgical procedure to cut or seal the tubes that carry a man's sperm. These are called the vas deferens, with the aim of permanently preventing pregnancy. In this video, we're going to be covering the following information, all of which is split into sections and timestamped. So first of all, what might you discuss with your doctor before the procedure? Well, your doctor will ask you why you want to have the procedure, your circumstances, provide information, and they might recommend counseling before agreeing to the procedure. You should only have a vasectomy if you're certain that you don't want any more children or you don't want children at all. And that's because a vasectomy is considered to be a permanent form of contraception and reversing a vasectomy can be done, but it's very difficult. If you have a partner, it's best to discuss it with them before you decide. And if possible, you should both agree to the procedure, but it's not a legal requirement here in the UK to get your partner's permission. So how is a vasectomy done? Well, generally speaking, there are two types of vasectomy. The first is something called a conventional vasectomy. That's using a scalpel, which is a surgical knife. And the second is a no scalpel vasectomy. Now the doctor doing your vasectomy will discuss which option is best for you. So first of all, let's briefly discuss a conventional vasectomy. That's the one that uses a scalpel. And in this procedure, the doctor first of all will numb your scrotum with a local anesthetic. They then make two small cuts in the skin on either side of your scrotum to reach the tubes that carry sperm to your testicles. These are called the vas deferens. Now each tube is cut and a small section is removed. The ends of the tubes are then closed either by tying them or sealing them using heat. The cuts are stitched, usually using dissolvable stitches, and these tend to go away on their own within about a week. Now the second option that you've got is a no scalpel vasectomy. This is where the doctor doesn't use a knife. For this, the doctor again numbs your scrotum with local anesthetic. They then make a tiny puncture hole in the skin of your scrotum to reach the tubes. This means that they don't need to cut the skin with a scalpel. The tubes are then closed in the same way as a conventional vasectomy, either being by tied or sealed. Now, there's little bleeding and no stitches with this procedure. It's thought to be less painful and is less likely to cause complications than a conventional vasectomy. Both options are typically very quick procedures, which usually take around 15 minutes and you can usually go home on the same day. Now, in terms of what you might expect, there's usually some discomfort and bruising for a few days afterwards, but this normally goes away quickly. So after this procedure is done, what might the doctor recommend? Well, the discomfort can usually be helped by wearing tight fitting underpants day and night for a week or so after the operation. It's best not to do heavy lifting or strenuous exercise for four weeks or so after the operation. And your doctor may also recommend taking some painkillers after the operation to help ease any discomfort that you might have. You should also look out for any possible complications or side effects and try to stay vigilant for these. These are things like persistent bleeding, excessive pain, infection, and this could be indicated by something like a very high temperature, vomiting, or fever, as well as rapidly enlarging one-sided scrotal hematoma. And this is a collection of blood that can form within the scrotum. Now, in terms of how effective a vasectomy is, it's generally considered to be a very effective procedure at preventing pregnancy. In fact, it's considered to be more than 99% effective. However, it does come with some potential risks like any procedure. So in terms of risks, there is a small risk of a hematoma, which we've already discussed, which is where blood collects like a bruise under the skin, as well as infection after the procedure. The bruising around the operation site can sometimes be quite marked, so please don't be surprised or alarmed about this. However, in a week or so, it usually tends to go down. Other men can get a hard lump called sperm granulomas. This is caused by sperm leaking from the tubes, and a small number of men may have a dull ache in the scrotum for a few weeks or months after the operation. Now, this aching and pain usually settles down within three months. However, a small number of men do develop pain which doesn't settle over time. Now this can be mild or severe. It may be in the scrotum, the penis, the testicles, or the lower tummy, and it can last longer than three months. Now rarely the procedure may fail and pregnancy can occur. These aren't all the risks, but the doctor carrying out the procedure should talk you through all of them before you agree to having this done. Now, how do you know if your vasectomy has been successful? Well, some sperm survive in the upstream part of the vas deferens for several weeks after the vasectomy. These can get into the semen for a while after the operation. About 12 weeks after the operation, you'll need to produce a semen test. And this is looked at under the microscope to check for sperm. 
If there are no sperm in this sample, you'll be given the all clear. If not, you'll need another test a month later, and you'll be told when the test shows the operation has been successful. And it's for this reason it's really important that until you know the operation has been successful, you should continue using another method of contraception in case there's a risk of getting someone pregnant in the meantime. In terms of having sex, it's generally advised that you should avoid having sexual activity for at least seven days after having a vasectomy, and you'll need to use another method of contraception for at least the first eight to 12 weeks, as it can take this long to clear the remaining sperm in your tubes. How long it's going to take exactly is going to vary from man to man, and remember there is still a risk of pregnancy during this time, and something else that's really important to remember is that vasectomy won't protect you from sexually transmitted infections or STIs, so you should continue to use protection, like a condom, to try and prevent this and get regular sexual health checkups. Some men ask, will it affect my sex drive? And the short answer is no. That's because testosterone continues to be passed into the bloodstream as before. Also, it's worth noting that you're still going to produce semen because it continues to be made in the seminal vesicles and prostate gland higher upstream. A vasectomy just means that the sperm can't get in past the blocked vas deferens and it's absorbed by the body. So what if you change your mind after having the vasectomy? Well, it's really important to note that you should consider a vasectomy as permanent. There is an option to reunite the two ends of cut vas deferens, but it's a difficult operation and it's not always successful. Also here in the UK, it's not available on the NHS at the present time, so an individual would have to pay to get this done privately. So to conclude the video, it goes without saying, but don't consider having an operation unless you and your partner are sure that you don't want children or further children. You should consider all sorts of situations when making this decision, including for example a tragedy within the family or breakup of your relationship, and please only have a vasectomy if you're sure you wouldn't want more children even in these kinds of situations. It's also wise to try and not make this decision at times of crisis or change, such as after having a new baby or termination of pregnancy for example. And it's Best not to make the decision if there are any major problems with your relationship with your partner. Whatever happens, I hope you made the right decision. I hope this video was helpful and informative for you. And please check out the resources in the description box of this video for more information from trusted resources. Once again, thanks for watching, and until next time, bye.